it'll be fine. So choose oh, to drown God. by Kraken <laughs> instead of, I don't know, maybe being burnt to a crisp by a dragon is probably not that bad. I don't know. There we go. Okay. Oh, this week's been terrible. Uh, Betsy DeVos said this week that it was perfectly acceptable that like only 0.02% of school children will die this school year from having classes in person again. But that's like 14,000 children. So we've like reached an all new like stage of like Aztec capitalism where it's like, eh, if like the, if like the 14,000 children from the underclasses died because they can't afford to homeschool, eh, fuck it really matter to us we are literally in the worst timeline conceivable honestly i i feel like it's not hyperbolic to say this like uh this rationale or these kind of policy decisions are like negligent homicide manslaughter yeah i mean it's come out in the past couple weeks that like indoors the virus is now like airborne classrooms school classrooms aren't that well ventilated and so the thing's gonna hang in the air and I saw in the Globe this week, there was someone who made the argument, tried to make the argument that expecting school children to wear masks all day is impractical in the midst of a public health crisis. How is it impractical if they don't want to die? <laughs> Explain that to me, please. So, so what? The seven-year-old is a little restless in his chair, but like you don't want him to wear a mask that might keep him from dying in an airborne plague. I wonder if this is like the mindset of the feudal lords in like the 1400s. I mean, the 14th century during the Black Death. Oh, the serfs, they're complaining because they're dying. Why why is it practical for them to not go to work? Hmm, good point, yeah. Um, I listened to a a podcast episode. I think it was Rev Left a couple of days ago. And there was an interview with uh, an anonymous representative from a project called On Necrocapitalism. And um, I'm just going to read the prologue, which they posted on April 10th. A virus is haunting the globe, one of pandemic proportions whose threat has necessitated unprecedented measures to forestall death and violence worse than the present crisis. But the cruelty, violence, and depredations that have accompanied the COVID-19 pandemic aren't merely detritus in the wake of its spread. They characterize the necrocapitalism of this juncture. Speaking of uh, callous and violent uh, discourse, The Economist yesterday called for uh, an end to coronavirus emergency stimulus relief, saying, tapering without the tantrum, as the economy recovers, fiscal policy has to shift. It's time to wind down emergency stimulus because it's fiscally irresponsible to be spending money to help people through an economic and health crisis. It's time to wind down the stimulus Mm. as the virus surges. Yeah. This is the reason why we don't get like practical policies like Medicare for all is because we have uh, a ruling class who has this mindset of, of why waste the expense to help people during a health crisis, which is just fucking deranged and bizarre. So <laughs> and it's, and like, I love coming back to this idea of fiscally irresponsible. Like, how are you even interpreting that? Like, it's worse for I'm a worse person. You know, my ego is going to take a hit if I allow, you know, money to actually go to people so they can not starve instead of going back to work. And why are my slaves <laughs> not working? <laughs> yeah, Get back right. to work. I don't care that you're about to keel over. What is the Florida? Is it uh, Rick DeSanta? Is that his name? Yeah, DeSantis. Yeah, mm-hmm. him like covering up like the amount of actual like cases and deaths. Like it's fucked right now. We're we're in a very bad time. And I feel oh, absolutely very. It's if you're a teacher right now, if you have kids, being scared right now is appropriate. That's not enough. You should yeah, be like should be angry. Enraged. Like I, to- I called, I talked to my mom on the phone yesterday and she's a fifth grade teacher. Like you guys should just burn down the school or some shit. If like, if, if it really comes to it, like if, if it really seems like they're going to make you go back to school, just like burn down the building or something. Like you can't, you guys can't make us go to work if the building's been burned to a crisp. Right. Like if we strike, you can, you know, bring in scabs and oppose the strike. But if we burn down the school, that's like the meme with the guy like tapping his temple. They burned shit down in Minneapolis and they got the goods. Just yeah, fire does Praxis. work in a lot. Yeah, <laughs> no, like know. going on strike is one thing, but like if if like push comes to shove, like it's really you're doing a public service 
yeah. at the end of the day because you're it's harm reduction. Blowing up the school is harm reduction because you aren't condemning tens of thousands of children, teachers, and those families of the students and as well as the faculty to a very, very grim outlook. Mm. Right. You just gotta make sure you get the hamster out of room two. Yeah. First. To to all of yeah, our exactly. listeners. Blowing up the school is parody satire. Ha ha ha. That's good. That was Don't funny, Joe. Saving that's, hamsters that's is funny. real. Always save the hamster. Parody, that's parody. The parody. Hamsters are the satire, best. though. Is it? Yeah. Kit, when is Pip going to be on the podcast? I know that he doesn't make a lot of noises, but be cool to see. I can, like, show you Pip, probably. <laughs> like, take it to sleeping on top of his feet of shaving. Oh. Okay. But, uh, Joe, this, this, it's, this is an interesting thing that I see is going on right now where there's these like these two counter narratives where like the coronavirus in this country is getting worse, but we're reopening. Whereas like there has been no solution to the problem of police brutality, but the protests and like everything is starting to be replaced by like murals being painted on streets and shit. It's like very weird the moment that we're living through right now. Where like, again, it's, it's a continuation of like what we were talking about last week with like, like capitalist realism in the society of the spectacle of like, there's two things going on here where like they're, they're like the protests, like they should still be going on because like, the only thing that really happened is like the cops went out, beat the shit out of everyone, and then everybody went back inside. We still need to be putting pressure on everybody. Mayors like Marty Walsh are like taking credit for like the mur- and the murals that are being painted in their streets and stuff. And it's like, you guys are doing nothing. You just passed a budget that like doesn't do anything, doesn't like affect the bottom line to your fucking police department at all. So like it's the, the Boston, bu- the Boston of- budget yeah. still allocates like four hundred million dollars to the police department. Exactly. Explain to me what exactly it is that you have done. Show me the line item that is like we did a thing. Last year's budget was like four hundred and fourteen million dollars. This year's budget is like four hundred and two. Boston Police Department's overtime budget is still twenty dollars, twenty million dollars more than the entire budget for the Boston public school system. Explain where you have done jack shit. <laughs> yeah, we got like one state passing a real law against qualified immunity, right? Did we get anything beyond that in terms of actual like? I mean, the Boston Herald wants me to think that uh, the Senate, the Mass Senate just passed a bill limiting qualified immunity, but I don't believe that. (laughs) Yeah, you know what else we got? Nancy Pelosi kneeled (laughs) in front of everyone. (laughs) Honestly, like the Herald, though, like anything to like to left of Reagan is seen as like radical communism, though. So there's also that. Yeah. Grain of salt. Just like I'm trying to resist the urge to like slip in, slide into like a Dave Rubin impression to the extent I can do one. But like the Globe has this whole section called ideas, and it's all of these like shitty neoliberal takes. Like, oh, should like we like actually do anything about climate change, or should we force the teachers to go back to work? These are practical ideas. <laughs> that we're talking about and it's like i i go through this section because i'm just laughing and like wrong this takes wrong this takes wrong this take is terrible this take makes me want to cry a little bit and this take makes me want to throw a brick through a window my like, brain is in recovery mode from all these important high level <laughs> ideas <laughs> it's it's the exchange of high level ideas it's the uh, marketplace of ideas oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Oh. That's actually what Nancy Pelosi said the night that Democrats won the House two years ago. We 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 want to make uh, Congress a marketplace of ideas, and we want to win in the marketplace. I'm like, oh my god, just kill me now, mm. just kill me now, please, please. Well, she got one thing right. Politics is about winning. So, <laughs> I mean, that in like the material power dynamic. I mean, Pelosi really is like yes. a Republican. She's an enabler because like. It's not in her class interest to do anything about the minimum wage or about rent or about ho- well, housing as a right or Medicare for all. Why? She, she has like $115 million net worth and like $46.5 million of that is in real estate. Yes. She's, uh, most <laughs> Democrats take money from the real estate developers and pharma. So like, why the fuck do you expect them to do anything about healthcare or housing? It, like drove me insane from like Sean McElwee today. And he's like, Trump, oh, and he's like, oh Biden's plan to like promises something about like climate in 2035 and like 40% to like black communities. Like this is a guy who opposes banning fracking. Like why the fuck do you believe anything he says about climate? 
that's the and man who refuses to ban fracking. The thing about Pelosi is to, and to mention another, to shout out another podcast real quick. I was listening to the Blowback podcast and uh, they were telling the story of how Nancy Pelosi got into, into office and it was, she started as being uh, very staunchly the Iraq war and was considered like a leading progressive candidate. Once she got into office, sold out the whole fucking movement and then completely just went with the war. So she's always been that way. <laughs> she was bad before that. I mean, she ran a really dirty campaign. Like the special election that she first got elected to Congress was uh, in 1987 against the then like national vice chair of the DSA, who was like an openly gay man in San Francisco. And she ran this like very homophobic like campaign. Yeah, but she wanted to put coexist stickers on the bombs that were dropping. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, as, as the meme goes, the Republicans say we hate poor folks, whereas the Democrats say we hate poor folks, but folks is with an X. Or like a little favorite, side flag at the end. Yeah. My favorite is that meme, but it's like with libertarians and uh, Republicans. Have you tried hitting on the poor while on weed? <laughs> <laughs> oh that reminds me of something um don't watch the new john stewart movie it's bad <laughs> oh really what's it called again uh irresistible it's just centrist bullshit the man is yeah. uh he his lack of imagination on politics that uh fall outside of the center left or right is very very small he has no real vision of anything uh it was it was he's, really he's always been like that yeah but it, it, like it, he's always been like the jay leno but like i do politics I, I don't really want to offend good. anybody. I like, don't really have to, anything to say. Like, but the joke, like, the thing is, like, he defined, like, the whole fucking, like, thing, though. This whole, like, comedy, like, progressive-leaning politics thing that everybody does now. Like, he started it, kind of. And, like, watching his new movie, it's, like, a secondhand embarrassment of, like, oh, dude, you really are just like my dad. And you didn't grow. And this is sad. And I just... I felt so shitty. And there's a couple good scenes in it and it brings up some decent points about like the disconnect between like like the more metropolitan coastal um, liberals and like the actual like, like, you know, heartland America, real working class people. But like, it's a movie that like, Jon Stewart has no imagination and it's just embarrassing and it frustrated me. But I'm happy that I'm able to use this podcast to talk about movies because I did go to film school, so. <laughs> Well, that sucks because every time I see an interview with him, he comes off as actually like caring and being a leftist and like knowing shit. Isn't like a major component of liberalism or like the moral superiority of like, I look like I care, but I'm like better than all of you. He's probably just comfortable where he is and it's just easier to just be like, all right, like I will give out the message, but like I don't really want structural change. So last time I saw him talk, he was like, "Structural change is what we need," and he said that for like forty-five minutes straight. Liz Warren said that for an entire campaign. I guess he just sucks at making movies. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) But like Elizabeth Warren said, "I want structural change for the entire campaign cycle," and she was like, "Medicare for all. We're gonna do this like really shitty group group gold. We're gonna replace the shitty Rube Goldberg disaster of a train wreck of a thing that we call the ACA, and we're gonna replace it with a different Rube Goldberg disaster where we're gonna." We're not going to pay for it. We're going to, but through taxes, but we're going to do this like regressive, like headcount payroll thing that's actually going to fuck over like the, the lower income workers way more than the higher income workers in the food chain. It is not actually going to be like everybody's going to be in it. It's just going to be like a Medicare for all who want it, but like wonkier. I guess. John Stewart is part of this recursive dynamic with media where like he's not really a politic like he doesn't really cover politics. He covers media about politics. So he's covering the politics of media. Yeah. Shitting on Fox News for being well, Fox News is in politics. <laughs> it's fairly easy to do. Chris Matthews and Hardball. That was a good one. <laughs> His appearance on Hardball <laughs> was pretty great. At the so time. Do you think women should have rights? Do you think women should be punished for trying to get an abortion? You went to hardball. Um, I feel like I should uh, fact check myself from earlier just for the sake of it since I have a master's in journalism and I worked hard for that. Apparently the Senate, the mass Senate bill that is now with the House would end qualified immunity for police except in cases where, quote, no reasonable defendant could have had reason to believe that such conduct would violate the law, yeah, according and, to the bill language. And that is like, that is like a so fucking words, monumental loophole. 
Yeah, so right? in other words, you're Which replacing you qualified with immunity with basically a different variation of qualified immunity. <laughs> it just, it yeah. just goes on forever. Yeah. Okay, we'll get rid of qualified immunity, but we're going to do this other thing instead <laughs> that basically serves the same exact purpose, but it's just a, we're calling it a different thing. Anytime there's a word and, like reasonable in a law, there's no, that's not, you just, it doesn't mean anything. Like, yeah, it's like, it's like the undue burden clause of the Roe Act. Right. Correction time. Hey, just jumping in to correct myself in post, it was the Roe versus Wade Supreme Court decision that I was referring to, and the undue burden clause was not crafted until Planned Parenthood v. Casey in 1992. I feel better now. It's qualified immunity all, all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you can pray that some reasonable judge will, like, make a good ruling on it, and then uh, that'll get used as precedent, but, you know, that's, that's going to be dream. a tiny, yeah, a tiny drop in a bucket. <laughs> Jesus. That's know. a fucking pipe dream. <laughs> we're, we're all fucked, and we should just accept that. <laughs> Lower your brother. expectations, people. <laughs> See, that's why my expectations are like, I've always set, I always set them as low, very, very, very low. And therefore I can't be surprised by anything. It's kind of enviable. Like your face is just always a smiley emoji. Even when you're talking about like, you could jump on the call and be like, my dad got run over by a cast, you know, like a caravan of fascists. And you'd just be like, that's the face you would be saying it with. And would be like, that's terrible, Joe. And you'd be like, I know. <laughs> and just like, your mouth would not turn down past like flat at all, ever. Yo, it's all okay to be not okay. Agreed. Hell yeah. <laughs> Seconded, thirded, fourthed it. <laughs> yeah, that, it took me a while to learn that, but yeah, definitely. Yeah, maybe you could teach it. You could teach workshops. <laughs> I think we need like a better Marxist Leninist term for revolutionary optimism because yeah, it makes me think I, of Trotsky too much. <laughs> I, I was going to say optimism because like I'm finding it increasingly difficult when I think about like the big picture of what's going on and what's, what's kind of looming like 10 years down the line or 10, 15 years down the line. It is very difficult not to kind of like descend into nihilism. I don't think it's possible to see a silver lining in any of like the things like coming down the line in the next 10, 15 years. Like, the world, the whole world caught on fire, but at least I got a deal on these shoes. <laughs> I beg to differ as a metalhead. All this shit that's happening mm-hmm. makes for, like, some very dark themes. A lot, like, of, lot of cool album covers. True. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. That is the but silver like, lining. But the air will be too toxic to breathe at some point, at a certain point. Yeah, but that's metal as fuck. Yeah, that dude. is really metal. <laughs> Yeah, we're I go everywhere with the fucking gas mask on and everything. Also, awesome death out. metal. Yeah. Destroyed. Yeah, no. So is that what, <laughs> is that what we're going to teach in the re-education camps after like ecological cataclysm has finally allowed us the opportunity to seize power? We're going to teach everybody to listen to death metal and enjoy it. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those tritones in there. <laughs> Absolutely. Gotta have those tritones. All right. As long as I, as long as I know what's gonna happen. We do need like a replacement for revolutionary optimism that is in keeping with this, you know, oncoming metal as fuck kind of ambiance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that would be, but I'll think about it. <laughs> I mean, it's very weird. The ruling class, is like, like. Uh, like recently, like, and we'll be in the next couple of years, like, they're like realigning a bit because it's like, oh shit, we went a little bit too far with the whole ethno nationalism thing. It's like the George Conways of the world are now like, ah fuck, well, we lost our power base in the GOP. So I guess we're just going to go invade the Democratic Party now and we're going to be like, this, we're going to make the Democratic Party of 2025 and t- to like the GOP of like 2005. And that's good. That's what that's what we're looking forward to. Don't don't shit on uh, George Conway, President Biden or whatever said that it's perfectly okay to like the war on terror part two or whatever. We like the George W. Bush re-election campaign, but like the Democratic Party platform of like five years from now. Do you guys remember? Well, these, like, never Trumpers invading the party. Do you guys remember in uh, World War II when the anarchists let the Vatican on board? That turned into fascism. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You know, 
it's very convenient how no one talks about the fact that like the Vatican at the time was kind of pro German. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how like the partisan forces, the resistance forces that did a lot of the heavy lifting in Europe and in uh, Western Europe and also Eastern Europe get completely whitewashed out of mainstream history because they were all communists and therefore, God forbid, the only people who are actually fighting back against fascists were all commies. So we can't have that in our mainstream version of history. This is why some of my clients think that America won the Vietnam War. Very sad. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know how you could, like, what mental gymnastics does one have to do to, like, come to that conclusion or like rationalization like our failure was so comprehensive it's literally an adverb but joe there's a lot of good vietnam movies so like that's a win though bro (laughs) joe there's a really good kate bush song about vietnam yeah look at that yeah man it's It's also bubbling But, like, to be serious, it is also bubbling. The places that say that this mm-hmm. last election cycle is GOP's Vietnam are not the places that people who don't believe that Vietnam was a horrendous failure are watching. Actually, that was the New York Times that ran that headline. And the New York Times is neoliberal as fuck. They also... Thank, wrote, you, for, thank you for making sure that I don't have to be the one to say that. They wrote positively about Hitler in the 30s, so... That is kind of an American tradition. I mean... Yes. Yeah. Fascism is like the American way. Truth, justice, the American way, and no non whites. Eugenics was an American, sort of That's an why American I said it's the American way. Yeah. It's literally the American it's way. The meme of the girl copying the test from the other student in front of her. I saw a variation on that where it's like the girl in the front is the United States, and then in the middle, it's Nazi Germany, and then someone added another girl cheating off of her. <laughs> it's America again. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to say that the Nazis, like, loved how awesome we were at systemic racism, so they stole... Actually, at Nuremberg, at, at the, tr- like, the, the war crimes trials after the war, the legal defense for most of the prominent Nazis were put on trial for war crimes. Their legal defense was that they were just simply emulating the American Jim Crow policies and that they didn't go far enough. You guys did it, and it was legit, so why can't we do it? Yeah. I learned from watching you do it. Mommy. Unfortunately for them, <laughs> that was not a sufficient defense. Fortunately for the rest of us, obviously. I don't know, man. They almost fucking got away with it. Let's let's be real about that. Like, the United States pretty much granted everybody immunity because they had access to information after the war, and they used it. No, I'm talking about, like, the top, like the top generals. All right. I'm not even going to pretend I'll, I'll, I know as much, so I'm going to defer to you on this. Like, I'm talking about, like, the like the Herman Gehrig's of the world, uh, like, Gehring, like, Von Kluge, well, actually, no, Von Kluge or Blues. Most brain, of so. them were hanged, uh, but, like, the lower like, officers. Like, Von Menstein, uh, like, Keitel, like, Gehring. Th- those were the type of people I was talking about who were actually put on trial, but, like, th- the people that you're referring to were, like, the lower-level kind of guys were, like, more, like, rank and file. Those were the people whose, like, uh, records were whitewashed. Or yeah, not necessarily, like, the general so much, it's, like, the scientists. Like, Shiro uh, Ishii? Von, like, uh, like uh, Von Braun, who became the father of the uh, NASA program. Who's Shiro Ishii? Uh, it was the Japanese. He, I don't remember exactly what his position was, but he was... Um... He was one of the scientists that oversaw the giant torture program they did. Uh, oh, yeah. That, unit that, unit that 731. Fucked. They were definitely the only people that outdo the Germans in terms of, like, sheer, like, torture. Yeah. That, I mean, the atrocities that happened in Japan are, like, I was raised Jewish. Like, I am in no, fuck, I have no delusions about whether or not the fucking Holocaust was real or not. Like, millions of Jews died. But the shit that the Japanese army did to prisoners of war is downright fucking horrifying even for Actually, a metalhead it, it went further than what the nazis did like there was this one tortured technique the japanese employed where they would plant a bamboo tree mm-hmm. and then oh yeah strap a guy in and put him over the pot and let the wait for the bamboo tree to grow through the person and wait Content for it to warning. Grow through. <laughs> we yeah. apologize for the torture porn episode <laughs> <laughs> hey we're gonna have to put some tws at the end <laughs> Or we could just edit this out. Sorry, this is what happens when you let a history major talk about like their like specialty. <laughs> their their area of specialty is like like the Shit 19th, that happened. Like the- <laughs>
the, the first, the, the world wars were kind of like my specialty, so. This is Joe, he has a bachelor's in shit that happened. <laughs> this is a hamster, which we can all use to calm down a little bit. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Pip. If you're only listening to this, just imagine a hamster. It's a very good Hamsters hamster. Hamsters are adorable. Joe, and... do you want to talk about the Catholic Church now? Yes. <laughs> oh, God, a boy is excited. Go off. All right. Hey, I was raised Catholic. I, I seize any opportunity possible to shit on them. I had to endure 16 years of their dogmatic ideology. So, like, this is just me getting time back that I already lost. Also, the fact that they built out me, a taxpayer, and all everyone else. They, uh, they managed to get $1.4 billion from, from taxpayers through the Paycheck Protection Program that was only supposed to be for small businesses. They're the largest religious... Uh, organized religious group on the planet with like three and a, like three billion like two or three billion followers and yet they managed to bilk out 1.4 billion largely the co- justification for all of this bail all of this loan money was the financial strain of having to pay out massive settlements and sex abuse lawsuits so the taxpayers are bailing out the catholic church for sex crimes against children. This is where we are. Yeah, it's pretty bad. (laughs) Even more proof, we're in the worst timeline. We're literally bailing out the church for settling cases in which priests diddled the children. Is this like a loophole that they're taking advantage of or just is this just like a law? Like, I don't... The they're, pandemic they're... meant that there was a lot more that went into the Paycheck Protection Program. Okay, okay. A lot of money here. Then the, uh, for some reason, the Trump administration decided that all faith groups get a waiver to the 500 employee cap, um, even though we had extended it for nonprofits, um, which like was a reasonable thing that went through Congress. Um, And then Trump decided to waive the employee cap for religious groups. And then the Catholic organizations were like, okay, well, we are close to bankrupt and need money because sex is. Actually, the way they managed to pull it off, the way they pulled it off was the church had individual dioceses apply for loans to get around the, the employee limits. Because as a whole, the church has like like a fuck ton of employees but like at the in the, at the diocese level it's less than 500 so like the, the loans are being handed out to individual dioceses but like when you like add up the aggregate amount of loan money given to all of the different dioceses across the country it totals up to 1.4 billion it doesn't, uh, doesn't look it, like what i'm reading oh what are you reading uh first result from my search on this news story is microsoft news which says there is no employee cap for or uh, affiliation rule um, for religion. So they don't need to do that, whether or not they did. That was my understanding from what the Associated Press reported this week. It's almost as if institutions are the problem. Like, that's my galaxy brain take. Like, what if we just stop trusting institutions? I've been burned too many times. Yeah, I have a tidbit of information uh, related back to Shiro Ishii and Catholicism. So apparently Soviet authorities wanted to prosecute him uh, because he oversaw the torture of, you know, a huge number of people in disgusting, inhumane conditions. And uh, the U.S. objected to that, claiming that the information was, quote unquote, absolutely invaluable. And... uh, Shiro Ishii decided to convert to Catholicism, so. Why am I not surprised by this? Fascists take care of their own, so. (laughs) No, I was talking about the the Catholicism part. Fascists take care of their own. (laughs) That's also true. As I've always been saying, like, the Catholic Church's purpose, it's like, people are surprised it's it's hilarious to me when people like act all like surprised and outraged that like religious leaders are supporting Trump. It's like the Catholic Church. This is very on brand for the Church. For most of history, recorded history of like the last two thousand years, their main purpose in society was to justify and give blessings to imperialist wars of conquest and or to also justify to create a justification for the societal higher like power hierarchy like as napoleon once said religion is the only thing that keeps the poor from murdering the rich that is one of the main roles of the church for the past 2000 years was to continue to get its uh cultural hegemony if you will of trying to convince the proletariat that this 
is the or- natural order of things, that this is a reasonable, like, class hierarchy. It's like, yes, you get nothing, but, like, the nobles, the, uh, the clergy, and the monarch get, like, everything. But you get nothing, and you're told to work yourself to death, and that, like, if you be a good little worker bee, you'll get salvation. So God wanted no, it. There's no guarantee of this, but somehow this worked for thousands and thousands yeah. of years. Yeah, before and, they had, like, reality TV and stuff. That's yeah. <laughs> it's like, that was one of the main roles. The other main roles was, like, justifying imperial wars of conquest. Like, the Crusades. At, uh, on the eve of the First Crusade, the Pope literally, like, gave a... Literally blessed the Crusade as, like, an act of God. Let's go murder these people. But it's what God wants. Oh, yeah. The Church now gives its blessing for you to go murder these people for whatever. They didn't have the phrase capital just yet. What is what is the equivalent to uh, America? What what would what is the Pope? The pope 11th S? century equivalent of America. <laughs> <laughs> Think of it that way. I mean, the one silver lining to all of this is that, like, well, COVID has had many silver linings of like lifting the veil, so to speak, or unmasking the shitty things. Like, this goes to show once and for all, like, this is like concrete proof that the Catholic Church is a business. COVID's also killing a lot of people, so it's not bad. I, so that's the silver lining. That's the silver lining. Not to mean that this is ideal. Okay. It's like like the, the like small little things that you can find that like came of this that like aren't like absolutely appalling. The mass and death just, is the cloud. Okay. Like thing like things that you can take out of this that aren't just like drenched in like human tragedy. Like, the fact, like, yes, the church is a business. Instead of selling you, like, uh, McWap, like, McMax or whatever, they're selling you salvation. Instead of, like, Quarter Pounders, they're selling you salvation. Um, McJesus. Yes. Is that McJesus? McMac Paddywhack. Yeah. <laughs> McJesus. I tripped over my words rockets. here. I meant to say, like, a Quarter Pounder. If I can quarter go off. Quarter Pounder, like... St. Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no! I had a I had a very a wide variety of uh, like satir- satiristic uh, church toys when I was a kid because my friend and I used to love poking fun at shit like that. So I don't talk about it a lot, but I actually am like a pretty spiritual person, and spirituality has been like without it, I don't think I could have healed at all from like the shit that I've had to deal with with my mental health and yada yada and the whole like the catholic church and just like not christianity in general because that's too broad there's too much going on there there's too much plurality um but especially the catholic church is a really good example of if you read like what the mystics what the gnostics what the sufis uh etc have written their view which is the view that i like to kind of align myself with is that god is like inside you and as soon as someone is telling you like no I have to stand between you and God and you have to go through me like it's such a joke and yet it's like the greatest joke in the world and everyone fucking believes it because of that's how the rest of life works now and I know that that's all just kind of a weird chicken and egg thing honestly but yeah I don't know it's hard that's like a very I wouldn't say that weird because like the Catholic Church has always had this kind of hierarchy about like the Mm clergy is up here and then everyone else down here you need to shut up and let me tell you what God is feeling right now like let me like like to lead like your you know spiritual you know whatever mass uh, catholic masses were uh done in latin until like the 60s despite the fact that the average person most people don't know latin yeah there was no direct engagement with the average lay person with the actual text with any of that shit and i know that like you maybe you would know whether feudalism came before i mean the catholic church is old as fuck right so it's the like, Catholic Church predates feudalism. Yeah, so feudalism maybe maybe evolved its justification from partially from the Catholic Church. I don't know. I'm, I'm really just guessing at this point, but I don't so know. You see where I'm going there. There is like relationship between Catholic Church and feudalism. I'm going to put that to the side for a second just to look at like how recent branches of Christianity have like sort of split off. So you have the like, like groups that aren't sure that three equals one, mm-hmm. and those are like your Unitarian Universalists. 
which are all like pretty rad mm-hmm. and like don't seem to have the like sometimes they have ministers uh quakers often also are not fry brach groups like occasionally you do have ministers but the ministers don't have like special ability or anything they're just there as a well they're working really hard on it and are here as a resource to help people type of level also you can now have female ministers in these groups yes thank you not like weird enforcing of bizarre ideas of family structure and then like you have this like next tiny little step where it's like no there is really the father the son and the holy ghost and these are all god but these are all distinct and we need to have three pillars on everything and that like i feel like it should be a tiny step but as soon as a group seems to be able to make it and like not be unsure about that or just reject it and be Unitarian. It's this weird type of logic no longer applies. <laughs> it's not that you're talking to God. It's not that like the ideas written in Catholic doctrine ha- still have that the bread literally becomes meat. I promise you its protein content is unchanged. <laughs> not that it like makes any difference for the spiritual message, but the ability to distinguish spiritual from physical and meaningful has broken down to a point that you can't use it and you can't reason with it. And I think that's where all of this extra power is being pushed in is that you can't reason with it because there's, you can't, like there's nothing to reason with. Literally three equals one, no traditional logic applies here. So someone can take advantage, and they do, a lot, over and over again, in as many ways as they can. I'm like, the Vulgate, yes, please do actually lecture in the language of people around you, or they're not going to be engaged. But also, there's this extra step of, okay, what power do we need to justify to lend legitimacy? And here's a power that's held by a group. Is it that surprising? Yeah, we also ask for doctors' opinions on things that doctors ha- should have no opinion on. Why are why is the APA endorsing or counter endorsing different bills in Congress? Like you're asking physicians about legal stuff. How on earth does any physician cover advertising legal? Like no, please stop. <laughs> It's like about as logical as going to your dentist for like your for like how to file your taxes. Dude, that's what I do. <laughs> or Mitch Hedberg used to be like, yeah, so they came to me and they were like, so you're a cook. Can you farm? <laughs> now, you also do. real shit. Taxes due tomorrow. <laughs> taxes are due tomorrow. Uh, my shit. favorite, like, my favorite, like, point to piggyback of, like, kids said, like, yeah, they do take advantages. Like, uh, in the Middle Ages, the way they act, the church actually paid for Saint, what is now St. Peter's Basilica is they started handing out what they called indulgences, which are basically bribes. They're like, okay, if you give us X amount of currency, you will have bought your salvation into heaven. And they used all of these bribes to pay for St. Peter's Basilica. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when they jumped the shark, I feel like. I mean, it, was, it wasn't just like, do what I tell you and then you're all set. It's like, do what I tell you and also, hey, I need $5 so I can buy, you know, a croissant. But you can kind of see that, like, it's kind of, it, it's actually continued into the modern day. Like, if you go to a Catholic mass, that I've had Ooh. the misfortune of doing several times in my adult life, uh, they, at a certain point in the mass, they, they bring, like, two or three guys, have them walk down the aisles with these baskets, and they, like, push it in front of you and be like, drop, like, some money into it. And when you think about it, like, rationally, when you actually, like, zoom out and think about it, 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 it makes no sense that they're asking for donations because the church just has all this money. They don't pay any property taxes. Like all of these things are covered. So they don't really need money. And yet they're like kind of coercing people during mass for shaking down people for money. This actually goes right into the point that I was going to make. Uh, Ellie brought up um, just spirituality in general, not as a religious doctrine, but as a tool to help with recovery from mental illness. And like for me, um, I am you know, full self-disclosure. I am the treasurer of a Narcotics Anonymous group. And um, I can say with 100% certainty that all the money we get every month that goes into the donation basket, uh, virtual or real, that has to all go back out to the Narcotics Anonymous community. Like we don't hold on to any of that. That goes directly into 
either NA World Services or uh, rent literature and supplies for the people who show up to the meetings and put money in that basket. The other point that I was going to touch on was um, sort of spiritual self-determination. Um, we don't ask people to follow any particular faith, just that they have some faith in whatever. Sometimes people will say, pray to a doorknob. I would recommend that you don't. But uh, I mean, fuck, if that keeps you clean, like, great, do that. You know what I mean? It does help people. And they're, I, I don't want to, you know, it's, it's an, almost impossible to get like real statistics, but peer support groups fucking help people either in conjunction or on their own. Like everybody has their own route through recovery, but faith in some form or fashion, whether it's faith in your peers, faith in something that you can't prove with a physics equation or just faith in the program itself like that is what gets people through when they feel completely fucking hopeless yeah you gotta have some kind of silver bullet you gotta have some kind of you know safety net otherwise this is why i think the church the catholic church needs to be burned to the ground and started from scratch i mean it does bear oh, mention that that. Pretty architecture <laughs> no true, the the for the people design. They're so pretty. Like, I was so, talking so about the, pretty. I was talking about the organization, not necessarily the building. Yeah, yeah no, he was talking, he meant in the game. Parody, parody. <laughs> parody. Like, I was <laughs> talking about, like, burning down the building. I was talking about burning, like, the, the organizational structure. Good luck trying to set stone on Because, fire, like, right? well, I was talking about the organizational <laughs> structure because, like, they don't really have any moral legitimacy anymore. Now it's come out that, like, they're, like, per- like protecting sexual predators because they're supposed to be, like, men of god not like sexual predators the only way to like really uh like regain that kind of like moral authority and like moral legitimacy is to just completely like burn the whole structure down the organization down the ground and start over i've heard this argument many times though like not all priests are bad not all of them are just because they aren't like molesting children themselves doesn't actually mean they aren't complicit their silence is complicity because unless you've purged like the entire system of any of like everything that is going wrong there is no way that anybody can realistically be expected to look up to you for any kind of moral authority or legitimacy this is exactly what leftists mean when they say all cops are bad yep. right yep yeah like i've definitely i know people who have received legitimate like personal and spiritual support from their catholic community but again you know People have received help from the mafia. People have received good things from lots of shit that was also, you know, Pizzagate. I don't know. Like, you can only, <laughs> when shit gets that bad, so you need to just be like, great, we're going to try this again. Like, delete, 404 error. Yeah, exactly. 404 error, just, just the whole church structure. I mean, not to mention <laughs> that, like, the, under construction. I mean, it certainly didn't help that last year, the, the third ranking Catholic in the, in the Vatican, the third ranking Catholic on the planet was convicted of sex crimes in Australia last year. Certainly doesn't help the case that like everything is fine. Oh, it's only a few priests. The the fi- the finance the like the minister of the treasury who's like number three in the Vatican, uh, behind the Pope and like the cardinals was convicted of sex crimes. Do you think it's- he's gonna get hit with the suicide gun or? No, he, his conviction was overturned on uh, bullshit legal reasoning. Well, like, like there's still there's still time then. No, I mean like his, uh, parody, his parody. case was overturned. His conviction was overturned. He was oh no, that's not a parody. Crimes, <laughs> and then somehow he managed to get it overturned, and now he's free to do what he will. George Epstein Pell, didn't kill himself. <laughs> that Next is uh, not a parody. <laughs> I mean, so most people don't agree with the idea of how the church administers justice, Mm -hmm. which I don't like. I think it's been the case for a long time that we don't really, like, no one, like, church justice was replaced by jury justice for a reason. Like, would rather involve community and, like, have victim have some say and not treat everything as a crime against God when it's really a crime against social fabric and trust and, like, all of that. Actually, I just present the Salem witch trials. That's not the Catholic Church and had a lot of Well, well it's not the Catholic Church, it. but it's like why, it's like a good example of like why <laughs> we switch from like religious justice to like jury justice. It may not necessarily be Catholic, but like we literally had people like executed because on the word of like someone who claimed to see like witches. 
Yeah, and the proof was like, all right, you know, shove her off this a cliff. This person said X. If she's innocent, she'll fall and die. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like most... what the Texas uh, criminal justice system is still fucking like, though? Yep. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So we know. I guess Texas has embraced the uh, the Old Testament style of uh, oh, yeah. meeting at punishment. Interestingly enough, Paul Verhoeven actually said uh, George Bush, when he was executing a bunch of people, uh, like all the prisoners, when he was governor in Texas, uh, that was when Paul Verhoeven said that that's the sign that fascism was coming to America. So this is around. He said this around the time he directed Starship Troopers. So Starship Troopers, starring Gary Busey's son, who looks exactly like him. <laughs> Problems with mystical justice aside, and I like, like I don't think Salem Witch House is a great example just because it's a small town here, and like there was social support for what happened, uh, which is horrendous and problematic, but not quite the same type of problematic as super hierarchical structures being failing people upwards or doing all sorts of other problematic and therefore hidden from the world setups and issues with who has trouble like this is all about the priest and it's priest centered rather than including people who are actually affected and that's incredibly painful and problematic and like not having control causes trauma don't do that like don't that is really bad and that setup i think is actually replicated pretty well by our current judicial system which is you hurt someone you now have a a court case that doesn't involve the person you hurt it involves the state versus you because you broke some weird artificial law and make them you are bad you are bad yes this one they don't actually care why uh you just are you just are like that I think we actually do know why people are bad in a variety of ways pretty well. We just kind of ignore that because, oh, yeah, we traumatized this person for like months and then years and then taught them bad ways of resolving differences and are surprised and then gave them guns because we think that's a good idea. Uh, like, we, we know why violence happened. This is not like a weird secret here. But yeah, ignore why it happened, and it's just this weird court case against a person rather than involving victim at all. I mean, victim gets to make a statement when that happens, but like has no other control over the process. And like generally, these crimes hurt more than just like a single victim. If someone's house is broken into, then their neighbors are freaked out. Like that that that's not it's not just that house that has the problem. This this does touch other people in almost every case. It's not just families that matter when someone dies like that entire person's support structure matters and that's like that's never a part of it and i think that's just a replication of how bad all of the church things are for non-mystical justice i find it kind of mind-blowing that we still take advice um, over a billion people take advice from an organization that was still of the official position that copernicus was correct in his assertion that the earth was the center of the solar system until the year 1994. That that checks out, man. Yeah. <laughs> Plus the it's just mind-blowing. And the level of stupidity. <laughs> I know, but like, I mean, I've always, that's like part of why I left that like kind of faith, because like I've always needed like the rationality and like, like logic of like, so you're expecting me to believe that a man lived to be 900 years old, yet the average life expectancy in this country is 77. How does this work? It wasn't capitalism then. Yeah, and he had uh, manna from heaven or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it was a different time. The, the species was fresher, so we lasted longer. But yeah, it's like it, shit like that. If you were a rich politician at that time, you couldn't drink the blood of the youthful innocent. Clearly the, the result, the, you know, the answer here is that we need to bring back biblical conditions. We need to have more like intermarriage between closely related people we need. <laughs> Noah became a drunk after the flood, so I mean. Yeah, and we have the plague. Oh, we're doing people. some flooding. We have the plague thing on our side as well. We got fucking <laughs> COVID is a global problem. It's <laughs> like, it, we're, 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 we got it. We're checking shit off the list right now. It's true. So and I mean, maybe instead of instead of uh, instead of locusts, they 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 misinterpreted locusts for like airborne pandemic, and so COVID is actually the locust that they was prophesizing. There is a literal locust plague in Africa as well. 
So we, we have the uh, metaphorical and the very real plagues happening simultaneously. It's all happening. The old Bangladeshi guy who was in front of me at the convenience store was right. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling the cashier, it's the almighty. Okay, can we get dragons though? Dragons. At the end of the world, I want my revelations dragon, please. <laughs> yes. Wait, is this dragon going to cook you or someone else into a crisp? I mean, if I'm gonna go out, I want to go out by a dragon. Like, come on, dragon! I don't. I, I, I do. dragon. That's pretty. That's pretty metal. Or a giant yeah. tanker bug from Starship Troopers. Yeah. I feel I like know. both of those would be walking unpleasant. dragons. <laughs> I think I would. I would personally like to be attacked by a kraken because those actually exist and they're on film. Fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. You're not. <laughs> Dragged down into the watery depths of South Cape. Yeah, because then you're just that you're just you just drown. That's not fun. Actually, yeah, you get to see a fucking giant squid. I, like, uh, so I read come this on, man. Sidebar. Sidebar. Nuclear explosion that you just get instantly vaporized. <laughs> like, like a dragon or like a there's no pain at all in front of yourself. There's something to watch. <laughs> okay, we can we. What's the sidebar? I want to hear the sidebar. <laughs> So when I was 14, uh, there was this book in my library for extremely morbid kids that was like, what would it actually be like to die in all of these variety of ways? And I was like, I I would need to know these things. So I read the book and the, the part about drowning was like, probably, you know, you'll pass out before you actually inhale any water. So like, you'll be fine. You know, it, you know, it's not great, but you won't actually have to like endure the horrible like choke, choking, gasping, uh, content warning, content warning. <laughs> yep, for kids. Yeah, this is, the, this is exactly the kind of uplifting messages we want to be teaching our children. <laughs> if you drown, it won't be that things. bad. It'll be fine. So choose to drown by Kraken <laughs> instead of, I don't know, maybe being burnt to a crisp by a dragon is probably not that bad. I don't know. I haven't done it. I imagine that'd be pretty fucking bad, being incinerated. Unless you're, unless it's like a pyroclastic <laughs> deep burn. No, but like deep burns take off enough of the skin that you lose uh, nerves. So like it'd probably be a little bit like, like it's going to hurt for a second. And then like, as soon as you get past that, you're just like fine. Like it hurts, I still say but, like, nuclear explosion like in the, no, in the blast no. zone. Because then you're just instantly vaporized. There's no pain, it's just poof. Mm. I didn't know you were a Posadist, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to feel anything. I mean, I live a, I live a life of like constant chronic pain. I just want poof right. to nothing. This like instant. Do we have an optimistic ending to this? Um, no, just no. no. I like it. No. This is our death. I mean, episode. dragons don't exist. <laughs> I thought that was the optimism. It doesn't suck to drown, guys. It doesn't suck that much to just drown. So you know. Damn, if we end this with optimism. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys want to see something kind of fun and gross? It's this yeah. dress ball that that my uh, sister got me for. Oh, me. <laughs> well, it's kind of it's kind of sporadically coming in and out with the burb yeah, stuff on, on the just, background. I'll just turn off the uh, background. Turn off Which the is epic, by the way. Thank you, Scott. Your background from a minute ago was very like metal album cover. Ooh. Oh yeah, I know. I've seen one of those. Before. Very. On this That's one. Dope, yeah. My whole day just got way better. Oh, that yeah. one and the other one. Oh. The sandstorm one. This is this is the Gnostic idea of the conceptualization, I should say, of the demiurge. Oh, that's perfect. We were just talking about the Gnostics. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other one is the 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 sandstorm from yeah. uh, Mad Max Fury Road. That's the one I was referring. Very metal, because we were talking about the end of the world. Exactly. Well, isn't the end of the world coming? The yeah. world is on fire. The world is on fire. Uh, a growing number, a <laughs> growing number of scientists. That's the way I like it. They'll never get bored. Start. A growing oh, number of scientists have said that uh, that we don't have until 2030. That we're actually already out of time, and anything that we do going forward is like basically like harm reduction. Yeah, good so luck like, with the. Okay, instead of like one third of all food production being wiped out, maybe we'll get it down to like 20 percent. Good luck with an optimistic ending to this one. <laughs> no, no, no. Here's to right now. I'm going to raise my slinky in, in a toast to uh, being here right now with you guys and not dead yet. Yeah, well. Still here, not dead yet. Fucking, I'm putting forward being yet. 
<laughs> we fucking we dunked on the Catholic Church, so yeah, we did something. I mean, I love it's, you one guys. Of my, it's one of my hobby horses. I also love you guys. All right, so shall we wrap up, ladies and gentlemen? You know, I mean, I have fun in like not so subtly taking jabs at my mom by like sending her articles about like shitty things the church has done. Like that article I sent in the Slack about a week ago about how they stole all that money from Native Americans. And she just goes, why did you send this? And I go, I thought you, wa- I thought you would be interested. What? It's how informative. And they stole money from Native Americans. The Catholics are pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> Thanks um, for the new one. Good tra- fan- That was a fantastic tra- transition. Yeah, uh, <laughs> very smooth. Yeah. So are we going to wrap it up there, I guess? Yeah. We can All keep right. going if you guys want. I you think we have enough about. material. <laughs> Unless we want this episode to be like two weeks long. All right. Um, so I'm Scott. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Death Mullet. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Death Mullet. Joe. Joe, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at JLFD96. Uh, I'm Ellie. Don't follow me anywhere, please. Except maybe on this podcast. You can listen to me here. This is where you can find me on this podcast. I'm Kit for my own mental health. I do not have any of the social media that I can be followed on. Yeah. It's a very wise decision. <laughs> and uh, I'm Jesse, and I don't have uh, the regular handles or whatever, but check out my SoundCloud, which is uh, slash Contingents Boston. Jesse did the theme song to this podcast. It's a very talented boy. Mm. A very talented boy. <laughs> I appreciate all the work. <laughs> <You're so boys. laughs> <laughs> oh god all right uh yeah uh, like i said we have a twitter we have a facebook we have a patreon uh we also have a youtube now all of those are at uh epic incredulity the youtube is just uh the epoch of incredulity but uh the the handles for all of the we could make a twitch i don't know the for the twitter the instagram and the patreon are all at epic incredulity check them out if you will also remember to please visit uh comrade-rosie.org and as always enjoy your epoch thank you Thank you.